Hello students, my name is Samitha Bhatt and I am going to teach you subject control system whose code is ETEL307. Today's topic of the discussion is open loop and closed loop system. In earlier slide we have also discussed about the classification of control system they, uh, and we have discussed that open loop and closed loop system. These are the main types of the closed loop system. Now, open loop control system, any physical system which does not automatically correct for variation in its output is called an open loop system. That means this is a system, physical system means this system is the interconnection of various components. And what are the components which we use in the control system? As we have discussed, we use input signal, we used controller, we can use process or the plant. So this is the system, open loop control system, in which output does not correct automatically with any disturbance. It totally depends upon the changes in the input that is called the open loop control system. And through the block diagram, we can also show that this process of the open loop control system, if we give the input signal, this is our desired output to the controller. Controller is what? This is the external system or the input to the system which can control the plant or the process that is called the controller. And the plant or process is what? This is the part of the system or portion of the system which we have to control so that this control signal will control the plant or process and we get the desired output. Now, what are the characteristics of the open loop system in these systems? Output is dependent on the input, dependent on the input, but controlling action or input is totally independent of the output or changes in the output of the system. If there is, that means, if there is any changes in the output system because of the any reason or any disturbances in the output of the system, but output will not correct automatically and in, so input is totally independent of the disturbance of the output. That means if the fixed input signal is uh, given to the system, we get the output according to that input signal, irrespective of any changes in the output. In these in, uh, systems, the output remains constant for a constant input signal provided the external condition remains unaltered. That means if there is any disturbances in the output system, output will not change automatically. It totally depends on the changes in the input only. If any open loop control system, the output is not compared with the refresh input. As a result, the accuracy of the system depends on the calibration. We always use calibrated scale in the input side and then according to that, we get the output. In the presence of the disturbances, if uh, any disturbance is present in the system, an open loop control system will not perform the desired task. Open loop control system can be used in practice only if the relationship between the input and output is known and if there are neither internal nor external disturbances. That means open loop system will work only when there is no disturbances in the input as well as in the output. Clearly, such systems are not feedback control systems. Note that any control system that operates on a time basis is open loop system. Predetermined set values are used by the open loop system. For instance, traffic control by means of signals operated on a time basis is an example of open loop system. We know that our traffic light signal is timer based system. Red light, green light, yellow light, all are having predetermined set values irrespective of the uh, vehicles are not present in, on the road or not. If there is no vehicle on the road, but green light signal, red light signal, and yellow light signal will operate it uh, on the timer based. Advantages of the open loop system. Such systems are simple in construction because no, no uh, 
other parts are used no more parts are used in this system so that the construction is very easy we use only input signal we use only controller plant process and the output very much convenient when output is difficult to measure the systems are easy for maintenance point of view uh, generally these are not troubled with the problems of stability such systems are simple to design and hence economical the disadvantages of open loop systems are these systems are inaccurate and unreliable because accuracy of such systems are totally dependent on the accurate recalibration of the controller these systems give inaccurate results if there are variations in the external environment as we have discussed if any disturbances in the output system its scale will change and we get the wrong output these systems can't sense internal disturbances in the system after the controller is stretched calibration recalibration of the controller is necessary time to time maintain the quality and accuracy of the desired output now <coughs> some examples of open loop control system first is the automatic toaster system in this system the quality of the toast depends on the time for which the toast is heated as we have preset the temperature of the toaster we get the output like that depending on the time setting bread is simply heated in this system this will not depend on the quality of the uh, bread this will depends only as the uh, manually we set the timer uh, or the temperature the toast quality is to be judged by the user and has no effect on the inputs so that we give the desired time or the desired temperature we set the power on and relay of the controller we have used to 35 degree celsius or uh, 10 degree celsius or heating process of the bread now the bread is has been processed and we get the actual toast now traffic light controller like the uh, traffic flow control system used on the roads is time dependent this not depend upon the uh, either the rush is not on the road the traffic on the road becomes mobile or stationary depending on the duration and sequence of the lap flow the sequence and duration are controlled by relays which are predetermined and not dependent on the rush on the road again this is the desired timer set has been set red time red light for timer for red light green light and yellow light according to that uh, signals will glow here this is the power relays to the control sequence and the lights are here these are the plant or the process and the control sequence relays are used to control the lights and we get the actual traffic control so that we can see that here the output is totally in, uh, totally dependent on the changes in the input if we set the time for a long time red light will be on for the long time irrespective of there is the rush on the road or not residential heating system the indoor temperature is the response variable of interest and is affected by the main disturbance input the outdoor temperature the desired temperature is set on a calibrated dial this position the wall that admits the steam or circulation through the radiator the wall dial is calibrated when the environment temperature has certain value when this value changes significantly the controlled temperature will deviate to the desired value by the large error events precise control will not be realized here this is the temperature set point we have set the temperature and this is the valve of the temperature and the steam manipulated variable outdoor temperature this is the disturbance here this is the room radiator and we get the indoor temperature this is the controlled output now the feedback or closed loop control system feedback closed loop control system a system that maintains a predescribed relationship between the output 
and the reference input by comparing them and using the difference as a means of the control is called a feedback control system. Feedback control system means we can compare the input signal with the actual output. If there is any disturbance on the output side, it we can we can compare the our desired response and the actual response and we get the output of the system. Now the closed loop control system. Feedback control systems are often referred to as closed loop control system. In practice, the terms feedback control and the closed loop control are used interchangeably. In the closed loop system, in the closed loop system, the actuating error signal, which is the difference between the input signal and the feedback signal, is fed to the controller so as to reduce the error and bring the output of the system to a desired value. The term closed loop control always implies the use of the feedback control action in order to reduce system error. So that means in the closed loop control system, there is a feedback to compare the actual response and the desired response. Here there is a block diagram of the closed system. This is the controller input, reference transducer, and this is the reference input. This is the controller. This is the process to be controlled, and this is the output of the signal. If there is any disturbance on the output side, the feedback signal is given to the input, and here this is the error detector which is used to find out the error between the desired output and the actual output. And according to that, this will give the error signal to the controller and controller will control that particular signal and give accurate signal to the plant or the process which can be controlled the output. Here, this is the RT, this is the reference input signal, which is our desired output. TT is the error signal. TT is the controlled output, NP is the calculated signal, and BT is the feedback signal. BT is the feedback signal. Now, the part of the output which is to be decided by feedback element is fed back to the reference input signal. This signal, which is output of feedback element, is called feedback signal. The signal which is given for the uh, actual response to the input that is called the feedback signal. It is then compared with the reference input giving error ET is equal to RT plus minus BT. When feedback signal is positive, the system are called positive feedback system. And if it is negative, these are called the negative feedback system. This error signal is then modified by the controller and decides a proportional manipulated signal for the process to be controlled. Now the error signal is going to the controller and this decides a proportional manipulated signal and according to that it gives the signal to the plant or the process. This manipulation is such that error will approach zero. This signal then actuates the actual system and produces an output. As output is controlled one, hence called the controlled output. So that we know that in control system, if there is the disturbance in the input signal, according to that, that output signal is going to the error detector and our desired response and the error detector will detect the error between the desired response and the actual response and according to that, it gives the error signal to the controller and controller will calculate that proportional error signal and then it will give the control signal to the plant or process and so that we can get the, our desired output. Now what are the advantages and disadvantages of the closed loop control system? Advantages, accuracy of this system is always very high because the controller modifies, manipulates the actuating signal such that the error in the system will be zero. Closed loop system senses environmental changes as well as internal disturbances and accordingly modifies the error. Here, output is not totally dependent on the input, uh, but 
input is dependent on the changes in the output. There is the reduction effect, uh, reduced effect of nonlinearities and distortions. Bandwidth operating frequency zone for such system is very high. This system is very much accurate. And the disadvantages are the systems are complicated and time consuming from design point of view and hence costlier. Obviously, we use more uh, physical components for the closed loop control system so that the system is more complicated than the open loop system and much time consuming than the open loop system. But advantage is, is that it is more reliable than the open loop system. Due to feedback system tries to connect the error from time to time, tendency to over connect the error may cause oscillations without bound in the system because this is feedback system. It will always compare the error so that uh, here it can produce any oscillations in the system. System has to design taking into consideration for problems of instability due to feedback. The stability problems are severe and must be taken care of while designing the system. Now, what are the classification of the control system or examples of the control system human being? The best example is human being. If a person wants to reach for a book on a table position of the book is given as the reference. Feedback from the eyes. Our eyes are used as an error detector. Uh, compares the actual position of the hands with reference position. Error signal is given to brain. Brain manipulates this error and gives signal to the hands. This process continues till the position of the hands get achieved appropriately. Now here the example is given here that we, if the human being wants to take a book on a table, here this is the reference position of the book. Input of, uh, is our input and this is the error detector here this is the brain which is used as a controller hands are our process of plan and this is the desired position of the hands now and the eyes are used as a feedback signal now if the hands are going here or there the eyes are used as a feedback signal they give uh, error to the error signal and the brain will work according to that and hand will take book on the same position and so that we can pick up that back book. Now the manual speed control system, a locomotive operator driving a train is a good example of the manual speed control system. Here the speedometer is used as a sensor or a feedback signal by which we can get the actual position of the speed of the uh, car or any driving vehicle. The objective is to maintain the speed equal to the speed limit sets. The entire system is shown in the block diagram in the figure. If we want to drive our car on 30, 40 km per hour speed or 60 km per hour speed, this is the speed limit which is our desired output. Here this is the error detector and this is the brain, this is the control action. Actuator are our hands. They can uh, pick up the speed or less the speed. And this is the vehicle mechanism which we have to control. This is the engine of the car or driving vehicle. And according to that, we get the speed of the car. If the speed of the car is more than the uh, limit, the set limit of the car, this sensor which is used as a speedometer will give the information about that. And here this error detector will give the error signal which is going to the brain and through hands we can set the or we can change the speed of our car so that we can manually control the speed of the car through feedback signal. Now what are the difference between the open loop and closed loop system? Any change in the output has no effect on the input. That is feedback does not exist in the open loop system as we have discussed. Now changes in the output affects the input which is possibly by use the feedback signal. If there is any disturbance in the output side we can change the input according to that. Output measurement is not required for the operation 
output measurement is necessary because in the open loop system output is totally dependent on the changes in the input so that there is no need of the measurement of the output now the feedback element is absent but in closed loop system feedback element is present error detector is absent but in closed loop system error detector is necessary it's very important because this uh, detector is used to compare the actual response and the desired response it is inaccurate and unreliable this is not much reliable system these are used for the small application purpose but for the high application process purpose like a, a robot or driving the speed car this is the accurate and reliable system highly sensitive to the disturbances less sensitive to the disturbances highly sensitive to the environmental, less sensitive to the environment. Thank you so much.